Today on Forbes, how to now get nearly unlimited funding to build your small business empire. The golden ticket to buy a small business has always been a small business administration loan, especially the 7A loan. But thanks to a recent and overlooked rule change, it just got even better, giving ambitious entrepreneurs a chance to build a diversified collection of small businesses, their own baby Berkshire Hathaways. The 7A program was established in the same law that created the Small Business Administration, also known as the SBA, in 1953. The SBA provides a 75% guarantee on these loans, reducing the risk for lenders and thereby encouraging them to fund small businesses. The money can be used for working capital, equipment, real estate, or even to buy a business. Business buyers love the SBA 7A program, not only because it makes more loans available, but also because of its forgiving collateral requirements. Most of the time, a personal guarantee from the buyer is enough. Even better, borrowers often don't need to put much, if any, money down. Repayment terms can stretch up to 25 years, making it a more affordable option than a standard bank loan that typically maxes out at just 10 years. The program has been a clear success. In fiscal 2024, 70,242 loans were approved, totaling $31.1 billion, with an average loan size of $443,097. Now, the total volume of loans issued could skyrocket. That's because in May 2023, the SBA significantly modified the $5 million cap on total loan guarantees per business owner. Previously, borrowers were limited to $5 million in SBA-backed loans, whether for a single business or spread across multiple ventures. But the agency revamped this so-called affiliation rule to allow borrowers to take out up to $5 million per business, as long as each business falls into a different subsector of the North American Industry Classification System, or NAICS. With 96 subsectors available, this change opens the door for business owners with good credit and strong track records to expand their reach and diversify. According to an SBA official, the change was made to, quote, reflect the Small Business Act's definition of a small business, which states in part that a small business is independently owned and operated and which is not dominant in its field of operation. Before this rule change, the SBA treated any businesses with common ownership as part of the same, quote, field of operation, regardless of industry. For example, if someone owned a dry cleaner, a restaurant, and a dental office, they were all grouped together to determine the total loan size, according to the SBA official. The change may have brought the SBA's lending criteria better into line with the Small Business Act, but it was still a dramatic move given that the SBA had been grouping businesses with common ownership together for seven decades. Ray Drew, managing director of Winston-Salem, North Carolina-based Truliant Federal Credit Union and host of the Art of SBA Lending podcast, notes that the SBA has been pushing lenders to issue smaller loans in an effort to drive business creation in underserved communities. Meanwhile, the $5 million loan cap hasn't changed since October 2010, when Congress increased it from $2 million in the Small Business Jobs Act of 2010. Drew cautions that just because borrowers can now exceed the cap doesn't mean banks will hand out million-dollar loans to just anyone. To qualify for more than $5 million in total financing, potential borrowers will need excellent credit and a proven track record of success. After all, the banks still retain 25% of the risk on these loans. Drew says, quote, If you want to go out and get five $5 million loans from the SBA, you better be really strong financially. The average Joe isn't going to get approved for all of that. For full coverage, check out Brandon Kokodin's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.